Hello, today I will show you the commissioning of our Ethernet APL rail field switch. I have brought two devices with me as examples for demonstration purposes. One is an 8-port variant of the device for connecting XIA field devices, and the other is a 24-port variant for connecting XIC field devices. Both devices have a Profibus PA proxy, which means that in addition to connecting Ethernet APL field devices, they also allow Profibus PA field devices to be connected. The switches are assembled identically. Each switch can be supplied by either a single or redundant power supply. The switches expect a power supply of between 20 and 60 volts DC. We also have two RJ45 network connection ports for connecting the local area network and two SFP module slots. Here, SFP modules can be plugged in to connect fiber optic cables. The devices support both multi-mode and single-mode modules. Depending on the variant, we have 8, 16, or 24 Ethernet APL spur ports and, in the variants with integrated Profibus PA proxy, the Profibus PA field devices can also be connected in addition to the Ethernet APL field devices. For commissioning, we need a computer from which we want to start commissioning, the switch, and a network. The simplest variant is to have a network with an active DHCP server available. Then we can simply connect both the switch and the computer to the network. The DHCP server assigns the IP addresses and we can access the switch directly from the computer. If no such network is available, we can also establish a direct connection between the switch and the computer. In this case, however, we have to take care of the IP address assignment ourselves. I will now show you the variant where we have to assign a static IP address ourselves. To do this, we must first supply the switch with power and establish a network connection with the local computer. Next, we must give the computer a static IP address. To do this, we open the Network and Sharing Center and select the Ethernet adapter which is used for the connection. You can now assign a static IP address via the properties and the Internet Protocol version 4 menu item. The IP address used is irrelevant. The important thing is that the switch later receives an IP address from the same address range as the computer. I now assign the computer the address to and confirm. The Pepperell and Fuchs Discovery and Configuration tool can then be used to scan for the switch. The tool is available free of charge on our homepage. After the application is launched, the scan is started automatically. We can already see that the switch has been recognized. It currently still has a non-valid IP address as it is waiting to be assigned by a DHCP server. In our case, this will not happen, so we have to assign an IP address manually. We can assign an IP address to the device via the properties. In this case, I assign address 3 to the switch and confirm. After a short time, we can see that the switch is accessible via the new IP address, and the green color indicator shows that we are now ready to establish a connection with the device. If several switches are to be put into operation and it is unclear which switch in the list belongs to which physical device, we have clearly displayed the serial number and MAC address as well as a QR code on the devices. This allows the devices to be easily identified and documents such as manuals, certificates, and data sheets can be accessed via the QR code. Now we can open the switch's web interface using the Open Web Interface button. Alternatively, we can also enter the IP address of the device directly in the browser. A password must be assigned during initial commissioning. Important! This password can only be reset by resetting the entire device to the factory setting. 
And now we also have access to the device's web interface. The Ethernet Switch's web interface offers an incredible number of options. Here we have diagnostic information on the switch itself, but also on connected field devices, which can be called up. We can make configurations to connect a control system or to edit the network parameters. And we have stored various documents on the switch itself, such as the manual, but also firmware-specific drivers, such as the FDI device package for integration into an asset management system or the Profinet GSDML file for integration into a control system. The first step, which is always recommended after initial commissioning, is to update the firmware. To do this, open the corresponding tab in the switch's web interface and import the firmware file. You can find the latest firmware on our homepage. There you will also find an RSS feed, which you can use to be informed about new firmware updates. Now we can continue with the commissioning of the field devices. I brought an Ethernet APL transmitter, a TMT86 from Endress and Hauser, and a Profibus PA device, from Pepperell and Fuchs. Which I connect to the switch. The setup is plug and play, which means that the switch automatically recognizes that a field device has been connected and what type of field device has been connected. So that after a short time, we can also recognize the successfully detected field device in the web interface. Depending on the device type, this automatic detection may take longer or shorter. Ethernet APL transmitters are detected quite quickly, and we can see various diagnostic parameters from our APL transmitter, such as the signal to noise ratio, the power and voltage, and also the device ID and the IP address, if the device has an IP address, of the connected transmitter. We also see slightly different diagnostic information for Profibus PA devices, as well as various data that the PA transmitter transmits, such as the supported Profibus PA profiles and the associated identifiers. This completes the commissioning of the switch. The field devices are now available via the network and can be integrated into the asset management system or the control system. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us.